I'm a big fan of Parallels version 5 for the Mac desktop. Um, it, it's a virtualization software. It allows you to install things like Windows or Linux or other operating systems and run them inside your Mac whilst running the Mac at the same time, which is infinitely more useful than, say, Boot Camp, where you have to boot into Windows or Linux and then reboot back into Macintosh. Um, I like it. It's seamless, it's fast, and it enables me to, to run things on my Windows install and test things like Internet Explorer to test my website designs that I do on the Mac and that kind of thing. So, the, you know, the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to click on the Parallels desktop icon that I've added to my dock. And you can see that I have two pre-configured here, two that I already have set up that I use all the time. One is just a basic Windows 7, and another one is a Windows 7 with Visual Studio uh, 2010 beta installed and Flex Builder. Now, what we're going to do, though, is I'm going to show you how to do a basic Windows 7 install uh, so we're going to set up a new one and what we do here is we can either click on the little drop down arrow and click new or another way the same thing is click go file and new and we're going to do that now if you had you know say I'm going to use Windows as the example but it applies to any of these operating systems you know if you have the CD or DVD go ahead and put it in your Macintosh player and it's going to essentially look at that that CD or DVD player to find you know that drive to find the CD. In my case I actually have the Windows 7 32-bit uh, file, an ISO file from the MSDN library so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go down and say choose an image file. I'm just going to go down to my desktop and I'm going to choose Windows 7 32-bit. And now I'm going to click continue. And so you know to help streamline the install process for Windows here you know I'm going to give it a username for my account. I'm just going to use my name you'd give it a company name if you have one and you would put in your your Windows product key in my case just for the sake of this video I'm gonna turn this off so it's gonna run Windows in what they call evaluation mode and then I'm gonna click on advanced options here because I have a my MacBook Pro here has a Core 2 Duo it has two CPUs I'm actually just gonna use one and you know the recommended here is the main memory of 1024 so one gigabyte I'm actually gonna put that up there to two gigabytes and click OK. I just like to have that extra breathing room. My machine has four gig of RAM and I find that two gig works out really well for me. Now I'm just going to click continue. It's going to ask for a name, you know, and that name is what you see here on this list where it's going to be displayed as. So I'm actually just going to call this new Windows 7 install. You have the option to let other users access this virtual machine. I'm the only person that uses this laptop so I'm just going to leave that turned off. The location is just going to put the file, this virtual machine, one file on my hard drive, on my internal drive there. And redirect Windows user folders to Mac. Now what's that? This is one of the things that I really like about Parallels. What it enables you to do is when you're inside the Windows virtual machine, if you click on say My Documents or the Downloads folders, it's actually going to point to your Macintosh, your OS X folders, your user folders. So, you know, it'll be the downloads folder on your Mac or the, de the documents folder on your Mac. I think that's brilliant. I think that's one of the features that I really just really impressed me and made me switch. I was a long time VM Fusion user. And, you know, this particular feature with the folders and the speed and just the ease of use of parallels is, is the reason I switched. So I'm just going to click create. It's going to do a little bit of setup there. You know, it has some boot options. Just leave it as it is. You know, CD, DVD, just leave that as it is. Click start. And now it's going to start booting up that virtual machine and go into the Windows setup. Now, from this point on, it's a straightforward, standard Windows setup procedure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video and resume after it's copied the files. I don't think you need to see the next 30 minutes as Windows copies its setup files and does all those things. Uh, there's nothing to do here except watch the progress bar. So I'm just going to pause the video and resume once it's finished copying the files. Okay, so the Windows 7 has installed its files and copied everything across and is now doing its initial reboot. In which case, you know, after that it has to do some, some configuration. So Windows went ahead and copied its files and installed the features and the updates and did a reboot and now it's going to go ahead and complete the installation. Windows has completed its install process and is now doing its initial reboot 
and set up procedures, you know, scripts for checking, you know, video display compatibility and that kind of thing, and is preparing the the desktop for first use. After setting up the desktop and display, you know, Parallels will go ahead and install its tools for its its drivers and little applications to allow some of the integration to take place. It's an automated process, um, just just basically allow it to do its thing and allow the install to take place. Once Parallels has installed its tools, Windows will then proceed to do its initial setup, its user account setup and the display and the themes and those kind of things. One of the nice things about Parallels on this machine here, you know, assuming that you have compatible hardware, um, it actually allows you to use, you know, whether you love it or hate it, you do have the option to use the Windows Aero interface and all of the, uh, you know, the, the sort of the, the fancy window chrome, if you like, you know, that sort of blurring and see-through effect. Once all of those have taken place, you know, it's going to pop up some little dialogues and Parallels is going to tell you that, you know, it's now going to log off and reboot the machine so that the tools that it went ahead and installed uh, can actually, you know, kick into operation and be configured. So just allow it to do the shutdown and reboot procedure. After the reboot and the welcome screen, you're going to have this screen appear and Parallels has different modes that it allows you to run in and the, the one that's kind of the default here is what's called coherence mode and as you can see what it says basically is it allows Windows applications to be integrated with your Mac and as the screen prompt tells you you know you can access the start menu from your Windows applications uh, in the Macintosh dock. Now what that means is essentially you know you don't have this full screen application taking over your Macintosh desktop and, and I'm going to demonstrate that now you know if you don't want to see this again you do have the option to do not you know just click here to say do not show again I actually like to have them up because you know and once you get used to it you know by all means go ahead and turn it off but until you get used to those separate modes I like to have this prompt box to remind me what mode I'm running in and, and how to you know access the various Windows features so I'm just going to click the X here to make it go away there's going to be a little dialog box here that's going to tell you, you know, basically the same thing, you know, down here on my dock now, it's going to say, you want to access the Windows applications, is going to be down here on the dock. And so I'm going to click OK. And you can see that on our Parallels virtual machine list, you know, here's our new Windows 7 install. And if you look down here on the dock, you know, I have this little sort of Windows Parallels dock icon. And when I click on there, Look at that, it brings up the Windows Start menu, so I can now access, you know, all the Windows applications. Um, it's a nice little feature, you know, and it's, and it's a great mode to run in if you just need to check something in Windows, but you want to see your Macintosh desktop at the same time. So that's basically how we just click there to make it go away. That's basically how we do a, a sort of a standard setup of Windows 7 in Parallels. I'm going to have some other videos showing you some of the other features and configuration options in Parallels and the various screen modes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on the Parallels desktop there. I'm going to click shut down to actually shut down the Windows Virtual Machine for now. And so what that does is it logs you off and shuts down the Windows Virtual Machine and it's going to take us back to the Macintosh desktop. Now if I want to reboot, you know, if I want to start up that machine again, you know, I can either just click on this screen here to start it up or I'm just going to click the X there to close it. Or I do have the option I can just also just click on the name here or you know I can just click on this this here to restart the Parallels virtual machine. Um, I'm not going to do that. Like I say, you know, there'll be some other videos coming along that's going to cover a lot of the other options and various ways of doing things in Parallels.